Hey, Steven. Nice seeing you connected. Hello. Hey, Genius. Nice seeing you connected. Hi, uh, nice seeing you too. Just making sure uh, that you can hear this. Uh, can, can you, you hear say me? something just to check if your microphone is working? Yeah, uh, I am. Uh... Oh, hello. Hello? Mm -mm, I don't hear. I don't hear anything. Uh, Professor, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Steven, can you speak something? Maybe it's a problem on, on my uh, end. Yeah, repeating myself. Uh, Hi, Gianta. Nice seeing you connected. Okay, all right. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, double check this. Oh, Mahima has connected. Mahima, how uh, does your microphone work? Uh, what? Microphone. Microphone. I think it's good. Okay. It's good. Ah, very good. Very good. Uh, Joanta, does your microphone work? Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Joanta. Genius. Okay, let's wait for the, the, the rest. Uh, Hello, Professor Hong. Nice, nice seeing you connected. Hello. Thank you for, uh, for joining the meeting. You, it, it's very, very appreciated. Um, right. No problem. 
<laughs> okay, my pleasure. Joanna, would you please resend uh, to, not to the NDSU, but to the Gmail account? Okay. Yeah, thank Hello. You. Oh, hey, Marimel, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for connecting. Oh, no problem. Thank you for hosting. Oh, great pleasure, great pleasure. <laughs> Last, last technical preparations. I just Same got ticket. an apartment in and Toronto. Wait, wait one, one at a time, please. <laughs> oh, no, no, no one. Tom, were you speaking? Uh, no, not really. I'm <laughs> <here to listen. laughs> yeah, I had to respond to uh, something. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, no, I, I was just telling uh, uh, Dr. Clean that I got an apartment in Halifax. I'll be moving in about a month and a half. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm, I'm in Canada, if, if that's confusing. <laughs> uh -huh. I, yeah. You already sent this ticket. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I'm checking. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kristen, thank you for connecting. Uh, nice, nice seeing you. And I see Professor Kleiner has uh, connected as well. So, um, there is an invitation, suggestion to, uh, for the uh, presenters to switch on the camera when, while presenting, and then uh, when you are just uh, asking and answering questions, it's it's fine to go as it, as it goes. Um, is, there, is there any challenges with cameras? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, closing mine just so that we do not uh, to not to interfere, to not not to use uh, the bandwidth. Uh, so just in my case, um, please wait some time because um, I have to wear some little bit professional dress because I am now in formal dress. So okay, okay. wait some time. Okay. Then I can uh, open the camera. But yeah, you are the, you're not the yeah. first speaker, uh, and then then use use the camera. Okay. okay. In any time I will speak. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh huh. Very good. Very good. So, um, just we will start in maybe a, a minute. Okay. So, uh, welcome uh, to the last meeting in the summer version of, of the computational chemistry class. And the uh, goal uh, of this uh, class was to communicate uh, the very basic background of the, of the theory and get uh, skilled in operating uh, correct software and correct hardware uh, that would enable every of the class of these to uh, contribute computational characterization of molecule and materials to their research project. Um, during the class, uh, we covered about uh, three thirds of the, of the more serious uh, of, the, of the regular semester class, molecular modeling, um, the Carter Fox theory and, and density functional theory background. And uh, this is the third uh, meeting when the attendees of the class are sharing the skills of uh, operating the software, targeting the fabrication of the, um, not fabrication, characterization of, of the materials. So um, the 
ideal duration of each presentation is uh, three, uh, five minutes plus five minutes questions. But since uh, the class of this year is not uh, very big, if we slightly, slightly, not substantially, go over this limit, uh, it will be okay. So um, the first two speakers are swapped because of, of the conflict schedule. So uh, the um, speaker number one will explain how to analyze computational data that will be explained how to generate by speaker number two. And then we'll go further through the practical aspects of the uh, computational char characterization of materials. So with this, uh, I would like to invite to the stage, uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to invite to, to the stage the uh, first uh, speaker, um, Kristen Patno. Uh, floor is yours. And uh, if you are okay with me flipping the slides, let, let's go. If you volunteer to do it yourself, uh, let, let me know. You can flip the slides if that works for you. Okay. And please, uh, would you please enable your camera? because it is uh, much easier to follow the uh, story when, when it is, if it is possible. Is that on? Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's go forward. Great, so I am going to be presenting on the vast output files density of states and total charge density. And if we can go to the next slide, I'll first give a brief introduction or kind of reminder of density, density functional theory and total charge density and how the two relate. And then I'll just go over the vast output files that we're able to generate. Um, an introduction to density of states, I believe Grant is also discussing that in more detail. And then we'll look briefly at total charge density. So if you can go to the next slide. Okay. Density functional theory as we talked about in class states that a minimum value of the total energy functional is the ground state energy of a system. And so the electronic charge density that yields the very minimum is then the exact single particle ground state energy. And then below that description, I actually just have a, a cartoon kind of that gives an idea of why we use DFT. It's essentially to take a system where you have a multi-electron system and look at it through a lens where that those multiple electrons are seen as <sighs> electron density. And it makes for a more simple, simple um, observation and visualization of the system when you're looking at all the electrons as one density rather than individual electrons themselves. So if we can go to the next slide, where total charge density comes into all of this, um, it's given us the sum of orbital charge densities and this is calculated by den um, electronic charge per unit, either length or, or volume, depending on your system. But since charge density shows an electronic distribution, we can easily use it to see any defects in a molecule visually. Um, and it's something that we can calculate using DFT. So because we have a simpler method of DFT, we can easily determine the total charge density and then use that for visualization purposes of our structures. So that's just kind of my brief reminder on total charge density and DFT. If we go to the next slide, I have a list of all the different vast output files that we get after running some simple molecular dynamics. Um, I have seven listed here, and I'll just go through on the next couple of slides what is included in each of those files. So on the next slide, we'll start with LCAR and the CHG files. And LCAR includes pretty much all the information that we need for everything I'm going to talk about today, with the exception of charge density. Um, but it includes a summary of all our input parameters, information about electronic steps, stress tensors, forces, local charges, and magnetic moments, as well as dielectric properties. The CHG file contains what we need for our charge density visualization. So that has lattice vectors, atomic coordinates, and total charge densities multiplied by volume. In the next slide, the CHG or charge car 
file is very similar to the regular CHD file. It just also includes the final charge density, and we can use this to restart any calculations from an existing charge density. So if you want to continue your simulations from a certain point, you can use that charge car file to continue on. The Kant car file is contains lattice parameters, the Bravai matrix, ionic positions, and it may include velocities as well. What's interesting about the Kant car file is that it's the same um, kind of format information as the post car file, which is an input file for VAS. And so if you rename the Kant car file to post car, you can use it to then continue your simulations from a certain point. So that's helpful if you're trying to run longer simulations or want to see what happens at kind of at different points in your simulation, you can use the Kant car file and build off of that moving forward. We go to the next slide. The DOS or DOS car file contains your density of states and integrated density of states per unit cell. And then our wave car file is actually a binary file that contains a lot of information regarding number of bands, initial cutoff energies, basis vectors, eigenvalues, and weights. And then the last output file is the Aussie car file, which is on the last next slide. And the Aussie car file contains, again, a lot of information. I have an image below of if you were to do more Aussie car but it contains information regarding the number of electronic steps, current free energy, change in free energy, change in band structure, number of um, Hamiltonians acting on the wave function, and difference between input and output charge densities. So that's kind of a brief overview of what is inside all the files that you can get from VASP. But then specifically, if we look at density of states on the next slide, you can use the outcar file to, oh, this is just an image of all of the files together. But the next slide is going to start showing how we can use the LCAR file to then generate density of states. I have here just a reminder, we've already talked quite a bit about density of states, especially in the gauss free perspective. Um, but it's just describing the number of states per interval energy, adding to energy level that are available to be occupied. So high density of states means that there are many states available for occupation. And the density of states that's low or of zero means that few states or no states can be occupied at that level. So the next slide is a more practical view of how we do this with VASP. In that first, we extract our list of orbitals from the outcar file. And this can be done either by the commands that I have below, or you can manu manually create a states file using our VI command. And you just copy and paste into that file just the orbital information from the outcar file. So I have an image below, and I've highlighted in a box where we see um, our homo and numo values. Um, those aren't going to come into play for the density of states process, but it's just interesting to note those as we've seen them before. So then on the next slide, we'll continue using that states file and the outcar file then. And so first, we'll use a variety of grep commands to find the number of electrons in the outcar file, the number, or sorry, the number of ions our Fermi energy and our alpha plus theta energy, um, which are all going to come in handy as parameters that we set when building the density of states file. So I have an image below again, just showing the practical um, commands using Cori. And I've highlighted all the resulting values. On the next slide, we get to sort of the essential command, which we use to generate that density of states file. And it's that bin rest dos norm which is going to prompt you to fill in a number of values that we just determined using that outcry and states file. It's going to ask for minimum and maximum energy, which are the first and last energies in your states file now. So the very first orbital's energy and the very last orbital's energy. Your number of states is exactly that number of states in your states file. Um, Fermi energy, alpha beta energy, number of atoms, and number of electrons. Again, we just found those previously using the grep commands. And then after entering all of those, you'll hit enter one more time. And on the next slide, you'll end up with an output. Oh, yeah. So then I have here just an image of me doing this practically. And as it prompts each value, I enter them in sequence, no sooner and no later than they're asked for. Otherwise, you have to start the whole process over. But and then at the very end, it says that the DOS Fermi file has been written. And so from there, we can then start to generate that as a PDF. 
we go to the next slide. Right now we have the glass from the and you can hit more to open it, but it's not gonna be too helpful for a visualization purpose. Um, but once you open it, you can look through it if you'd like or close it right away with a simple click command. And then we'll use the new prod to generate the DOS in a PS file, and then use our PS to PDF write command to finally convert it to a PDF, which you can then copy to first the Photon server and then your local computer. And on the next slide, I have it opened in just Adobe Acrobat Viewer, what mine looks like. A um, little bit of a wider x-axis than I needed, but you can see both the unoccupied on the right and the occupied overholes on the left-hand side where that purple is. And obviously, depending on what values you put for your minimum and maximum energies, you can shrink or elongate that, that x-axis. And the y-axis is just showing our density of state. So that's how you generate kind of practically the PDF of your density states, and you can visualize that pretty easily just using that outcard file, and then a few simple commands in Linux. So then if we move on, the next slide starts to talk about total charge density. And this process is basically just a visualization using VMD software that I use. Um, so you transfer your postcard and charge card files to your local computer. Um, since they're in core, you have to copy them first to Photon and then you'll computer, and then open them both as new molecules in BMD. And they have their own specific file type, their vast postcard and vast charge card. Those, in my case, didn't autofill, and so I had to manually select them, but you'll want to make sure those are correct in order to visualize properly. And then in the next slide, I just have kind of what you'll end up seeing after those are chosen and your graphical representations have been filled in. Um, I used van der Waals, dynamic fonts, and solid surfaces so that you can see the kind of molecule. It's in all red. It's essentially just the molecule. And then when you have those gray spheres on top, it's also highlighting those charge densities within the actual molecule. So that's a pretty simple tool to use just to easily visualize your charge densities. And like I said before, because um, charge density is related to, or sorry, since we can calculate charge density from DFT, we can then view it, and then as we, if we see um, distortions in our structure, we can easily notice where errors are happening um, in some of our files. And so then the last um, slide is just a summary of essentially what I already talked about, and then a brief, since it is the last presentation of the summary, what I learned from the summary that I'll be using in my own research. Excuse me. So using Linux commands, we are able to run like the dynamics on our molecules that give a lot of different output files that we can use for a variety of different visualizations. Um, in my case, we look specifically at density of states and charge density. And then of our course materials that we covered all summer, the most, I think, applicable to my own research is going to be reactionization and visualization techniques. I have here on the right um, an image of some of the molecules I use for my work. and. The, this is a protein with the ligand dock to it, and so I want to do some work with individual optimization and then optimization of the entire you know, dock module to see what's happening to the change in my energies, um, whether the ligand is attached or not. But that's all I have. I see there's some questions already. So. Okay, uh, please join me in thanking uh, Kristen for uh, important and, and uh, substantial presentation. And now. Uh, um, questions are welcome in both verbal and typed forms. So uh, there are um, three or two and a half questions. So um, if the author of the question doesn't want to speak it up, I can just read it. Uh, so um, Ray Mel is asking which. Uh, Okay, now there are four questions. So, uh, which states in the density of states usually are usually most important when analyzing occupied and unoccupied states? Or, excuse me. Um. Excuse me. Am I understanding the most important when looking at? Density of states are going to be your homo and lumo 
value so that you can see where that change is happening from occupied to unoccupied orbitals. Okay. Um, and the next question uh, from the same uh, uh, visitor is, should we care about much deeper states? Yes or no, and short reason. I don't know if I understand what you mean by deeper states. Um, okay, I'm going to bring up your slide uh, with uh, example of density of states. Mm -hmm. And one can go at like Homo and Luma in your case are at minus five and zero. And uh, the question is, should one, is, is, is there a reason to explore states at min minus 25 electron volts? Do they contribute to any processes in uh, chemistry or in material science? I would, hmm. I'm not entirely sure, but I would have to say, I think, yes, when we're looking into excitation and emission of- Which, which, which excitation and emission in which range? Oh, I'm so like if, you, if you go from infrared, visible, UV, X-ray, gamma rays, in, in which range uh, lower states are important? Lower states would be more important in like your IR and- Uh-uh. No, the other way. Uh-huh. That's the, I'm sorry, I'm blinking on the name of it. So it is a uh, uh, higher excitation energy when it is between UV and X-ray. Yes, thank you. Okay, so let's quickly go to next uh, questions and then to the next speaker. So uh, Javed Mohabit is asking, I am just wondering that the shown calculation is a real model system. Why is the LUMO energy positive? Yes, and the answer to that is it was a, a real system, but I found out after generating the files that I my postcard file had an error in it, so the elements and numbers are not actually correct. So if I were to redo this with the actual model, you would have a negative thermal energy. Um, okay. I found out yesterday it was an error in my file. Okay, and now there is a killer question <laughs> no, no. <laughs> from, from uh, Professor Kilina. So uh, what is energy cutoff? So it is not, uh, it was not uh, delivered uh, during uh, the lectures. So you may try to go to Google quickly. <laughs> Just try to uh, connect uh, your memories about basis states with uh, this question. My, if I remember correctly, it has something to do with fixing a number of plane waves in a basis set? Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent, yes. Yes, it is a ma maximal energy uh, for, for, for which uh, states are still included into the plane wave basis set. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was moving into the right direction. So any questions uh, to Kristen, uh, anyone, uh, or, or comments? If more questions one, more questions two, more questions three. Okay, let's thank Kristen once again. And uh, let's go to the, uh, thank you, Jayanta, for, for your comment. So the um, presentation by Li Hu Sha. So uh, I want before, please prepare your camera. It will be much easier to follow what, what you present uh, if, you yeah. should, if you enable it. So uh, Li Hu is um, the uh, summer visitor to the University of North Dakota and uh, uh, in a frame of collaboration between NDSU and UND, he is uh, visiting, he was visiting this uh, summer schools. So, um, Li Hu? Uh, yes, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm showing, you were not updating slides. I'm showing the, if you were sending something in the last, an, Hour, I need to quickly bring it up, or you, uh, you should share. 
But if, if you, it is the old version, is it okay? Yes. Okay. okay. Yep. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, I need to share my screen, right? Okay. Um, I can share, um, if, if it is the same slides, I can keep sharing, but uh, if you were changing slides, then please share the screen. <laughs> Just a little change because of uh, I successfully sent uh, submit the job and it uh, really works. Just okay. Little, okay. Yes, yeah. please, please share the screen then. Okay, I will share the screen. Thank you. Uh, so uh, if, okay. my, if by some reason it doesn't uh, work, uh, just quickly send me the, the oh, it works. It seems to work. It works? Okay. I, I, I got and, it. And you may go to uh, presenter's uh, view. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Li Xuexia, a visiting uh, a visitor of this course. And uh, today I will give a brief review of DFT uh, inputs, input files. Just we all know that uh, we need five files to complete uh, uh, in, uh, VASP calculation, um, including the in-car, post-car, post-car key points and uh, uh, score it to submit a job. So first, uh, we focus on the in-car and the function of the in-car. The in-car file holds the input parameters, which is still the calculation. I usually uh, divide the in-car in to four parts. The first part is the global parameters, which um, come for the whole calculation system um, environment. Uh, um, of the calculations. And the uh, red letters is the parameters I usually need to change when I deal with different systems. The first one is the uh, ice beam. Um, I would like to change the ice beam uh, to two when I deal with a system, when I deal with a magnetic uh, systems, which usually contains the transition mantles, mantle such as the ion or cobalt. And the second one is in card. It is just uh, <laughs> the question uh, um, mentioned. This is the energy of the cutoff. It's about the uh, is the cutoff energy for the plant wave uh, basis set. And when we increase this number, it will uh, increase the calculation uh, accuracy, but at the same time, it will in, uh, cost more expensive calculation results. So we should uh, set this number carefully. And um, one thing that we should take care of is that the value of the in car should uh, be equal or greater than the max value of the in max in port car. And in that so that we can get a, a reliable calculation results. And the next one parameter I usually need to change is that the L wave and L charge, especially when I to do some multiple uh, calculations, such as uh, uh, accurate uh, projection of those, or um, when I want to get a BSE, um, optical properties, which all need the wave car um, of wave car and charge car of previous calculations. And if we, we don't want to use it, just turn it to false. And the second part is about the electronic relaxation. It's just about the electronic convergency at the same minutes. And uh, in this part, um, I usually change uh, the NELM, which uh, means the next step of the electronic convergency. And uh, if we do mean with a um, uh, system with a bad initial structure, this could help us to 
get a convergence in electronic relaxation. And the next one is uh, NELM, which means the uh, uh, minor step uh, of the convergence. Um, it, ha it also helps to, uh, to the structural optimization, which um, will give us a more accuracy, accurate uh, weight car for next, uh, next uh, structural optimization. And, uh, and EDIFF is also a, 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 a important one. When we want to get an accurate structure, especially um, when we want to calculate the final phonal uh, spectrum, that will help helps us to get a really accurate structure. Mm, to set it at uh, minus eight. And usually when we set it at uh, minus five, it's also okay to get a stable structure or um, reliable structure too. And the third par part of the INCAR is that uh, ionic relaxation, which control the uh, optimi structure optimization. The first one is the uh, NS stop, which control the step of the whole whole structure optimization. I usually, and the second one, and the second one I used to change is ISF, which control the strikes and the relaxation of the autumn and the whole structures. When I set it to ISF um, to two which means that the, um, the, all, the position of the autumn changed, but the um, crystal parameter will remain the same. And uh, if I change the ISF to three, that means the, both the autumn and the parameter of crystal will change at the same time. And, uh, and the part four of the keywords is, uh, is about the special property. Uh, in most calculation, we want to get the, the special property of the system. And the first um, example is, uh, to, is the calculation of partial density of states. We need to uh, set the I charge to 11, which means to read the cha uh, charge car uh, get from previous calculation. And then we need to set an orbital to 11, which means uh, to calculate the projection of density of states. And example two is about the electric, electrical field, which I uh, plan to do uh, a job about the electric field. Um, we need to take the electrical field into consideration, especially when we deal with the system, uh, such like uh, electronic catalysis, which um, include three phase, include the solid phase, uh, gas phase, and even liquid phase. So the electronic field should take <laughs> into consideration, and we could set a null dipole to choose to start a to start a electro electric field calculation, and then we can choose choose the length of the I dipole to set the uh, direction of the electric field, and then we can also to can set the field intensity by the E field, and. Uh, Second one is the postcard. Um, and the postcard contains the information about the structure, especially in the position of the all atoms and the parameter of the whole crystal. Um, the step I usually prepare the postcard for the VASP, I usually need to build a mode by the material studio and then transform the mode to the postcard by the uh, scripts 
created by Professor Yan Zhao. Yan Zhao. And uh, the contain of the postcard, we usually have about the uh, um, 10 part of the uh, postcard. And uh, what I think is most important is that uh, uh, I, um, we could change the um, we could change the uh, relaxation state of the all uh, all atoms to change the T to F to fix or to relax the atoms we can we can and the picture at the right of the slides we can see that um, the free one is the atoms that uh, oh. Sorry. Um, the picture at the right, at the left of the slides is that uh, a carboxyl uh, the salt on the copper surface. And the left one, free one, is means that uh, the carbon atom underneath is relaxed and is free to relax. And uh, uh, right, the right picture of it, the red, Autumn, autumns means that uh, the autumn, the carbon autumns beneath the, uh, is uh, fixed during the structure optimization. Um, we sure we can um, achieve the by uh, trans transfer the T to the F of the respect uh, autumns. And we can also uh, make it by the uh, script uh, created by the professor in law. Okay. And the third one, third script is K points. And the K points file determines the sampling of the one first Brion and Zoom, which also contains five part of the uh, of the K points. The header is part of the command of the, the file. And the second one, zero means the automatically uh, produced the file generation uh, scheme. And the third one is about the grid type. This in this um, key point is about the Markhausen pack grid. And, uh, and the fourth, is the number of the subdivisions in each direction. Just choose one we usually need to change to um, to uh, get a, to change to uh, change the accuracy of the um, simulation cal calculation. When we change with a low number such as one one one, the cal calculation will be no accuracy. And if you use the number with 771, a higher number, which will get the high accuracy of the uh, simulation. And uh, then is the port car of the input file. The input the podcast file contains uh, relevant information concerning the pseudo potential that are necessary to run the calculation. In the cluster of the UND, I can use the choose command to get, to get the podcast uh, of respect to all terms to the podcast we use to uh, use for the rest calculation. What, uh, what uh, we should take care of is that the, the screens of the car should be consistent with the element in the postcard. And then when we do that, and we can use great TIT postcard to uh, look what kind of postcard we used in the whole postcard. And then we can, there are an uh, example of Copper port car. Uh, we can find some very important information in port car. The first one is the number of the valence electrons. 
and we can see that the, the carbon electron in this car is 11. And the atomic mass of carbon copper in is about uh, 63. And and uh, the index equal to 295. And just like what I said before, uh, the index of the uh, port car um, beside the cutoff energy in the in car filed at some extent. Wow. <laughs> and the third one and the last one is about scripts to some mid jobs. Uh, we should uh, I also changed in those who means the number of the condition com compute nodes for the job. And the next one we can change is uh, uh, end task per nodes, which means which corresponds to the number of calls on the com computer nodes. And the third one is the time of the uh, whole calculations. And, uh, and uh, I used the uh, script I listed before. Uh, and and I submit a job in the uh, cluster, and it works just like the um, this one. Uh, it's running now, and and uh, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. For your okay. Yeah, let's uh, join me in uh, thanking Li Hushan for a very detailed uh, presentation. And now uh, there is a. Please keep your slide. Maybe there someone will uh, want to ask a specific question. So uh, it's time uh, for questions either by uh, verbal, uh, speaking to the microphone and typing. And by now, there are uh, two questions in the uh, chat line. First one by Professor Svetlana Kivin is, uh, what is a direct uh, coordinate system? Like direct versus Cartesian. Oh, Cartesian. Oh, that's the. Uh, 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 Can you show the slide with your uh, postcard? Yeah. Yeah, and now please explain. Cartesian. This is direct. Uh, and Cartesian. I mean, Cartesian uh, correlation is the real position of the autumn, which which are not um, covered to the fraction uh, coordination, I mean. OK, OK. So you, you are telling that direct is fractional coordinates? Yeah. OK, um, good. Thank you. And uh, there are a couple of questions from Professor Han Huang. So oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, fraction of what? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you explain about fractional coordinates? Fraction of, of what? Um, oh, fraction of the whole parameters of the uh, parameters of um, crystal. You mean size of the unit cell? Yes. Okay, good. And what is the size of the unit cell for the model that oh, you are showing? Which part of the, of the postcard should we look for the size of the unit cell? Can you show by your mouse? Uh, I beg your pardon. Could you speak again? Yes. Which part in your work? Which part of the postcard file tells us about size of the unit cell? Okay, let me show you. Uh, oh, you can see the number in the yes. um, line three. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah. So line three to five, right? Yes, line three to five, which okay. represent the one parameters of the crystal. Okay, and uh, there is another question. Please name the lines. 
like uh, what uh, what this uh, numbers in lines from three to five mean? The lines. Uh, uh, the parameters of the the whole cell, such as the A anxious and B anxious and C anxious. Is that right? Okay. 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 So uh, lengths, dimensions in X, Y, and Z, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, X, Y, Z. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Lihu. And, and there are questions from Professor Han Kuang. So he's answering, uh, asking, what is the difference between uh, Monhorst Pak 771 versus mm. Gawa 771? So it's a question about K points. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that I'm not very sure about that. Do you expect that calculations will give different results? If you change this keyword, one course talk to gamma. Yes, uh, I think they will all remain the same, the results. Okay, okay. Um, no. Professor Hung, would you would you like to uh, okay. give the give the key to to uh, quickly answer uh, yourself to uh, okay, so for all grids, they are the same. So it, it is, a, uh, in, it will make sense if the number of the uh, K points is uh, even. Yeah. And there is one more question uh, from Professor Han Kuang. How do you decide the value for n cut? Okay. Um, I usually, um, in cut, uh, just as I said, we usually to have to set the in cut uh, be equal or greater than the max value of the in car in the port car. Just I mentioned in this place. Mm -hmm. There is a in max of of every uh, of respect all terms in port car, right? So the in car should be large than the max number of the in max in the port car. And uh, if you want to get a uh, um, accurate calculation uh, results, you can um, use a value. Uh, equal to the 1.3 times of the max of the max in max in the port car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Professor Hang. Uh, 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 more questions to Lihusha. Uh -huh. More questions. One. More questions. Two. More questions. Three. Okay. Let's thank. Once again, thank you. Yeah, and sorry, Dimitri. I just want to weigh in. I think this uh, Li Xue is the first presentation in the United States, and this uh, thank you so much to give him this opportunity. Yeah. Oh, and, okay. uh, I think he did great job, and uh, I learned a lot from this. I mean, again, thank you and the uh, other professors. A question here, very helpful. Him. Very helpful for him. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tao. Th uh, thank you. Uh, mm. It's Professor, it's, it's really, really great. For the, uh, I'm also happy with this opportunity. And now uh, let's go to the presenter number three. Um, so, um, Lihu, you may, yes, thank you for stopping the uh, sharing of the, of the screen. And um, the next presenter is uh, Jayanta Banerjee. Uh, would you like to share the screen or would you like me to flip your slides? Okay. Uh... So, and Janta, please uh, consider to uh, bring to, to um, Enable your camera.
Janta, are you here? Yeah, but it's not working. It's not working here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, go anyway. Yeah, anyway. Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Today I'm going to present uh, molecular orbitals by BMD. <clears throat> Next slide. Oh, sorry, it, it, it stopped sharing. Just, just, just a second, it will come back. Yes, I think it should be. Yes, we'll go, go ahead. Yeah, so BMD uses several different GUI forms. It designs to control to specific aspect of the molecular display, like to control the appearance of the graphics display window or the change the colors of displayed objects, like several aspects. And each form has a unique name, like includes a button, which is the name of the form near the top of the window. The think this button will hide the form from view. The following sections, like using your mouse, you can do it and you can represent the brief description of the forms available in the VMD. The remaining things that you can do by transferring your files to your local computer and into VMD. Next slide. So BMD main you can select the file here and select the new molecule that you want to transfer from your local computer to here. But previously you have to write several scripts, like several commands to come here. But in BMD main, you can represent the new molecule and its structure, like homo lumo and a lot of aspects. So here first I started here file and then go to new molecule and new molecule means file name my name and came 676 so you have to browse it here and then you have to select from your uh, movie dot xyz or outcar files from your files you have to you have to choose like portrait portrait postcard so first i have chosen here postcard so first file Go to new molecule and then new molecules file name. File name users your name and uh, that uh, subject. And then go to the directory and then postcard. Select postcard. After selecting postcard, you have to select files of type. Then you have to select all files. And the determined file type that we'll discuss later. Next slide. So when you come here, then file ID zero TADF Oscar file atoms frames volume, then load files of Oscar. Determine file types all. You have to select it from automatically, and then file molecule graphics. Then you have to come to graphics. So graphics, there are a lot of options: representations, skulls, materials, levels, tools. Then you have to choose representations. Next slide. Then graphical representations. Then you already you come postcard file, right? So then you have to choose from selected atoms, draw styles, selection, trajectory, periodic, coloring method, material, then drawing method. So then after that drawing method, you have to choose dynamic bonds. Next slide. After coming here, create dynamic bonds. So you are completely from your files, you are viewing in 3D. Like XYZ in 3D mode, you are viewing complete the molecule, the structure. So then, some selected atoms, coloring method that I will discuss a little bit later. Drawing methods, dynamic bonds, default distance cutoff. Distance cutoff, you cannot increase bigger because it will destroy the 
complete st proper structure. So the what you have to do, you have to minimize, like you have to optimize it. So I have already chosen here 2.0, mount radius 0.3, bond resolution 12. So then, next slide, I will discuss later. So when you come here, then you have to choose dynamic bonds and drawing method, you have to choose BDW. That's very important. And then material. Material means, I'm now here choosing opaque and sphere scales. Like sphere scales is very important here in uh, BMD. You have to properly, you have to optimize it. Like I'm choosing here 0 0.3 and sphere resolution like 12. So dynamic bonds, BDW and then sphere scales. Next slide. Next slide. Then when you have to go back, then you have to choose further BMD main because you only you have chosen one directory. Like, so then you have to create new molecule. So then coming to new molecule, you have to come back to BMD main. Then you have to choose the file new molecule. Then next slide. The new molecule file name for charge 0040 means that is your homo. So homo you have to choose it because we are here discussing the orbitals. So homo and plumo that's important. So homo orbitals you have to choose for charge that is very important because after postcode you have to choose for charge then file name browse and then go to the determined file type and then load and VASP part chart that you have to select. Next slide. And here part chart 0, 0.00 means that from HOMO, you have to select it here. Then isosurface, coloring method, drawing method, and ice, ISO value, and range, volume. Volume is okay, and draw. From drawing, you have to choose from points to solid surface that I'm representing little bit later but here you can already you can uh, your eyes you can show means uh, you can see like draw solid surface you have to check it here properly from points you have to come to solid surface and then range and ISO so range means that button that below that ISO value button that is important because that will completely determine your proper and optimized structure next slide here in purchase 0. Uh, 0040 means like homo orbitals i'm showing here and then from solid surface you have to come here and coloring method you have to choose coloring method means you have to choose color id and then a range, I already told that range means you have to choose the proper button here and proper optimization button. You have to choose it uh, like left, uh, completely left you have to go and then you have to optimize the ISO value and range. And then uh, from color you have to choose like I'm representing here uh, that is HOMO. So HOMO is like blue zero and then um, color ID and volume. Next slide. This homo orbitals and then from lumo orbitals you have to show right after that so same thing you have to repeat like you have to go new molecules and then you have to repeat things torture 0 0.41 you have to collect from your transfer files like after postcard torture 0 0.40 and then after that you have to come to lumo so lumo orbitals then select a completely from your uh, files uh, and then you have to choose color id and then one one means here the red so several colors are there so after representing blue i'm coming to red so red here this is representing as a lumo orbital so then uh, the material is opaque same iso surface then you have to optimize properly here iso value like you have to completely not very right it's a left and little bit right so then step on draw obviously you have to come here from points to solid surface otherwise oh, what will happen you cannot draw properly and then apply changes automatically then a heat just apply next slide 3d you can visualize the complete moiety thanks thanks so much
Okay. Um, please join me in thanking Joyata uh, for a very visual presentation. So uh, questions are very welcome either by uh, words or in the typed uh, typed way. So uh, questions one, questions two, questions three. Oh, Jabot is asking um, how can you visualize all K file? Joanta, do you understand the question? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, the means visualization is you have to transfer from your, uh, like, uh, um, Dr. Dimitri describing complete things uh, previously. That's why I have taken from uh, like our class materials. And then you have to visualize it properly means like uh, through your homo and lumo structure, uh, like that already through your color ID that already you represented. I mean, uh, that's from there, you have to check it that uh, it's proper, uh, that already you, uh, uh, from class that I already I transferred the files like uh, from Parchurch 4.0 like Homo and uh, 4.1 like Lumo. From there, uh, you can directly visualize the Homo Lumo and the and later also you can calculate the energy gap uh, through other methods. I don't know here how to do it, but through Homo and Lumo you can visualize the proper structure. Uh, Javed, does it? Uh, uh, are you satisfied with the uh, answer, or you your question was about something different? You can either speak or type. Okay. Um, so let me let, let me complete this one. So, uh, <laughs> Javed, uh, just to finish discussion, uh, okay. It does contain coordinate, but uh, Joanta was showing that first he was plotting the um, structure, and then on the top of the structure he was downloading the um, partial density distribution. So it was two interlaced images. Um, there is a question from Professor Han Huang. Uh, let me read. Is there anything that VMD can do that other tools like Vesta cannot? For lots of tasks, Vesta is much easier to use. It's okay if you don't know Vesta and do not know the answer. And uh, Janda, please uh, feel free to answer. And uh, any other class attendees are welcome to contribute to the uh, to this to answering this question, especially uh, Janice. Joanta? No. Is there any any uh, any comment uh, in reply to Professor Huang? Yeah, BMD is. Uh, I think uh, it's a visual molecular dynamics, right? So I think it's good. So anything that BMD can do. Uh, maybe means like uh, it's special things like uh, like this, like in electron density. It's wait, a wait, wait. electron you density. Told, uh, Joanna, you already told from the name of the of the of the code. Yeah. So it's um, uh, visual molecular dynamics. I think yeah. it is the answer for. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You, you can visualize the molecule. That's the important thing. Three D in three D. But uh, in Vesta, uh -huh. what do you have to do? You can just uh, miss electron density. You can calculate, right? Yeah. yeah, and so the, uh, the same Dr. Yulun yeah. Khan is answering, uh, so VMD uh, is VMD much can, yeah, right. movies with. Hmm. More so questions. For visualization is, is good. I think uh -huh. in, for visualization, it's a very good, from UIC that developed, it's very good. OK, OK. More questions to Jayanta? More questions one, more questions two. More questions for me. Okay, please join me thanking Jayanta for very visual and, and helpful presentation. It, it will really help uh, uh, most of us in the future career. And please, uh, Mahima, please prepare to present. Uh, please consider to enable camera if it is possible. And uh, I can flip your slides unless you vote uh, to, to flip it yourself. The camera is on, no? Nothing. No? No. 
Do I need to disconnect and connect again? No, no, you do, not, do not waste time. If, uh, if it doesn't work from the beginning, you'll try to follow. Okay. And please tell me when to flip the slides. So, good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to press. Just, wait, 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 just a second. If someone has microphone enabled and uh, is typing something, please uh, mute the microphone because uh, to, to, to avoid additional noise. Thank you. Okay, Fatima, please continue. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Today I'm going to present about the UV visible spectra using WASP. And if you guys are wondering what kind of quantities can WASP calculate, so from WASP, we can calculate total energies, forces, and relaxed structures, and band structures, and dose and projected dose, that is density of states, and magnetic properties, and optical properties. Optical properties, that is absorption spectra and dielectric functions, like that. So for, calculate, so for setting up a WASP calculation, you need four input files to run a calculations. That is postcard, postcard, and key points and in card. Uh, next slide. So here I am just showing how to calculate these in our photons. Next slide. Just yeah. Uh, I am I showing the right side? Ah, uh, yeah. This is the first one. Okay. Is it okay or should I go to the next one? No, no. So here the finding simulated spectra with WASP. So first you need to log into our photo and or whatever the system you have. And you need to have some commands that you need to follow. And then you need to go to this Cori directory. And you can see all those postcard and all the WASP files. And Next file, next slide. So here you can see the states, uh, and there are some errors also happen when I run the calculation. And you will see the band number, band energies, and occupations for these calculations. In next slide. You'll see the next slide. Oh, okay, so I think this is just zoomed in. You'll see the uh, command for the. I think my something happened with my slides. I guess it zoomed out or something. Okay. Oh, next slide. So here you can see the states that are uh, band number, band energy, and occupations. So first band number is one, and the last one is 46. So I just cropped it and put it in there. And next slide. After finding head and tail of your energy system, you will get these many values. And these are the input and output files. And next. So you can see the XYZ of your particular file. And next one, this is the set of the files that we created, the new directories and the was direct directories you can see from this one. Next one. So this will explain next couple of slides. So you will get these uh, after running the all strength uh, command. Next slide. 
so to the summary so the multi electron observables can be often represented in terms of one electron matrix element that is shown in the previous slide in the next slide i will explain a little bit more so next slide these are the values that is initial final from that equation and intensities and energies the red color ones are the intensities for the energy intensities and next slide these are the main direct commands that i used for run this uh, job and next slide you will see the parameters for the spectra so in third uh, lines you can see the number of transitions that is 640 so after running this experiment i will get the 640 lines in this spectra so and then you can put minimum and maximum energy differences so i put 0.1 and 8 and an electron volt i put like 0.1 and 40 so and after that i'll get the spectrum so you can see in that there is new directory is formed so after we get the spectra you can go to the head spectrum and tail spectrum you can see what we can and you will get the uv and so the new directory is formed is pe1.ps so that is our uv i guess yeah is p is yeah that one is the uv and next slide and after we get all this uh, uv and visible spectra you can convert that into pdf that is this the command command uh, that command is here and after you done this job you can download this pdf and we can see what are the changes happen in the next slide so these are the frequencies for the visible and ultraviolet spectroscopy next slide so i'll get this uh, for the uv and you can see the uv start from 400 nanometers so i'll get the exact one here that's the output and so i tried the titanium dioxide you can next slide for the titanium dioxide spectrum these are the computational one that like this is the experimental one you can see the differences 350 nanometer and next slide this is the visible one so visible start from 3 327 so you can see the electron mode so this is what i did for running this job that's it thank you okay please join me in thanking mahima for being brave and taking this uh, complicated subject and uh, the questions are very welcome either uh, by pronouncing them into microphone or typing in the chat line so there is a, a question yeah. from professor sofana kivina uh, uh, i'll i'll read it out uh, and mahima you, you may start thinking how to answer the interaction of the electronic wave function of the system with light results in redistribution of the electronic charge density at the excited state compared to the ground state is this effect included into vas calculation of the spectra I'm not sure. I think yes. I think this will be included in the vast calculation of the spectrum. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you think it is uh, taken in? Uh, it is included mm -hmm. in full or partial mm -hmm. or? Oh, okay. Uh oh. What was that? Sorry. Uh, um, do you think it is included in full 
or only uh, approximately to the certain extent? Certain extent. Yes. So uh, the um, upon uh, what you were reporting is uh, independent orbital approximation yes. when uh, orbitals and uh, charge density from which they are derived are not changing completely. But when one is promoting uh, electron from occupied to unoccupied orbital, overall density uh, is is expected to change. So it is um, partial account of, of the effect that uh, Professor Kilene is, is mentioning. Uh, next question from Mary Mel. Um, what is oscillator energy and where would one find it in the output files and how would one visualize it in the spectra? So oscillator energy, I think it's the wait, 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 before, uh, Mahima, before answering, please uh, tell, do you like the terminology? Do you like the word, the ter term oscillator energy, or you would prefer something different? Oh, oscillator uh, uh, energy. I think. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Now, uh, now uh, the uh, Mary Mel has uh, corrected oscillator strengths. Okay, please continue. So the oscillator energy. Oscillator strength. So. So it's the probability for the absorption and emission spectra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So there will be energy levels in the electromagnetic radiation transitions, right? So in an atom or molecule, so that will express the probability of I mm -hmm. So uh, uh, pl let's uh, finish uh, the... Uh, okay, yeah, uh, let me read the questions once again. And where would you find in the output files and how would you visualize it, the spectra? In spectra... So in the output file, it is the third column. And yeah, in, the, in the spectra... Uh, how does, uh, like, which feature of, of the spectra should one look at to find correspondence to oscillator strengths? Oh, it's in the... So, in this 0.35 at top. Uh -huh. So you, you tell that uh, height corresponds. Yeah, the height in electron oh. volts. So in point no, no, three. In absorbent. Okay, height. Uh, yeah, it, so it's okay, uh, I think it, it is uh, thinking in the right direction, and uh, Mary Mel should be happy with the answer. I hope. Uh, now, next question from mm -hmm. Professor Han Huang: How the number of key points and value of n bands? may affect the calculated optical spectrum? This is the challenging question. If you have any uh, comments, please answer, and I'll, I'll help after. Uh, Mahima, do you think that computing, making computation with a larger number of k-points will make the spectrum more precise? Just say yes or no. Uh, yes. Okay, very good. Um, and then uh, Janice is just giving uh, you a credit, and then would you know a way to show this photo okay. excitation okay. using movies? I think, yeah, we can show. Uh, Janice, uh, it, it is possible, oh, but it, it is, uh, it is quite quite hard. One needs not uh, to to make movie not of the atoms, but of the orbitals as, as they change in time. So it's, oh. There will be like molecular movies, right? 
But if you, instead of atoms, there will be a charge density or orbitals moving in, in time. So it's a um, hard task for visualization. More questions to Mahima? More questions one? More questions two? More questions three? Let's thank Mahima once again. Thank you. And um, now, last but not least, uh, presenter uh, Janice. So if your facility allows uh, to enable camera at UBF Plus, and uh, mic uh, switching on the microphone is not optional. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> if, you can, if it is possible, please uh, turn uh, the uh, camera as well. Unfor <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> my camera is not working today, so uh, I will be unable to do so. But uh, <laughs> I'll uh, try and figure it out for uh, the next presentation if I can. OK. All righty. So, um, I have uh, done my presentation on uh, vast molecular dynamics and heating, um, particularly of how to create these sort of scenarios in uh, input files, um, how to calculate um, these exact interactions, and um, exactly um, how these molecular dynamics are made. Um, and mind you, this is a very broad overview, considering I have to. Uh, you know, talk about quite a few topics that were covered in previous presentations that uh, they could have done in a lot more detail. So thank you to the previous presenters and their information that, you know, have helped me uh, sort of create this presentation. All right, uh, next slide. So what we'll be talking about in uh, this particular section, uh, thermal heating and file prep um, for, um, you know, just showing uh, where the molecular dynamics are, or at least like the calculated molecular dynamics uh, are sort of concentrated and um, how exactly to prep these files for a batch job. Okay, next. Firstly, uh, we start with uh, file modifications uh, for the heat process. So um, you're gonna have to you're going to have to input a valid uh, Postgar, Podcar, uh, Cordy debug sh and uh, k point files in order to properly um, run everything as these files contain um, most of the information about your molecular structure that you're going to need in order to actually properly calcu calculate um, the interaction uh, described. Um, then you can copy an in car blank slate from a proper directory or uh, make it yourself, either one. Um, I particularly copied this from uh, one of uh, Dr. Keelan's uh, uh, blank slate bins. And once it was uh, copied over, um, I was able to change whatever sort of um, uh, parameters I saw fit. As um, Liju had uh, you know, described in her presentation, or uh, sorry, his presentation, um, uh, these uh, sort of modifications can change uh, temperature, um, what sort of, uh, you know, magnetic field would be working with, uh, you know, different things such as step size, how many steps, um, convergence size, uh, temperature, et cetera, et cetera. And um, those are just some common modifications. There's plenty of other modifications that you can do in order to um, sort of start these computations and uh, go through with uh, whatever you may need for your research. All right, next slide. Just a second. What would you Okay. Okay. So for submitting a job, um, once all files have been copied over and edited, a uh, job based uh, on in-cars modifications can be submitted. Um, this is always a batch job based off the Cori debug um, sh file that you have in your uh, directory. Um, otherwise, you can't really submit a job unless you uh, make a new Cori debug uh, file. Um, and once you have that, you can uh, submit sbatch uh, Cori underscore debug dot sh and that will uh, submit a batch job um, according to your uh, inputted uh, values and parameters. Um, and it will take a little bit of time, but uh, as soon as uh, the queue is uh, in line for you to uh, get your job uh, completed, then your job will complete, and uh, the files 
all the uh, necessarily um, necessary uh, output files will be found in your directory. Um, okay, next. So um, here is the uh, main molecular dynamics. Um, so what heating mainly affects, at least in the uh, kinetic theory of gases, um, is uh, temperature is related to kinetic energy directly. And so by having a temperature graph, you can show exactly what sort of kinetic energy you're looking at, at least in the terms of the motion of the molecules. Anyways, um, that's going to be in your uh, um, simulation. Um, you can also use more accurate uh, theoretical frameworks depending on um, what sort of uh, inputs you have and what sort of actual programming you put into it. Um, though most commonly um, for very, you know, sort of quick and easy calculations, uh, kinetic theory of gases is very easy and quick to do uh, computationally. Um, additionally, um, on the code side of things, um, you can see a lot of the uh, sort of velocities in the CONCAR file and uh, a couple of uh, other parameters um, noted in the outcar file, um, which you can, you know, sort of allow for visualization of heated or heating or the heated system, um, and this is shown at like each time step. So, given the time span, you can get more and more velocities um, that are more and more accurate progressively, up to a point where it's a very smooth and accurate simulation. Okay, next. So uh, how we can visualize these uh, molecular dynamics for the most part. These are only the two ways that um, I personally know. There are plenty of other ways that you can visualize molecular dynamics. Um, though these are the two main ways that um, I've done and are particularly necessary for what I'm interested in. Um, so for temperature versus time graphs, um, this can show a lot. Oh, sorry. So, so, so just a second. Oh, no worries. You're good. It just jumped. OK, let's continue. No worries. Oh, uh, but so one way you can do this is you could create a, a GNU plot of a temperature versus time. So this can show often uh, these sort of movements of a molecular system, um, given you know what the what sort of format you're programming in at least. So let's say that you had um, a similar system to uh, what we were doing in class, such as the uh, which is really close to the structure on the right here, um, essentially you would end up with, um, you know, if it's a very, very basic temperature graph, you'd often see these jumps of going back to this uh, one sort of a temperature, which is often, you know, the temperature that you set at, and then it'll gradually decrease. These sort of like bumps happen. And so once these bumps happen, they typically sort of relax um, because a lot of the energy is being dispersed into uh, potential energy. So. Once that potential energy sort of uh, goes down, then it bumps back up, the program bumps back up, and then it can go down again. Um, or you can do something a little bit more complex like this uh, graph shows. I'm not s specifically sure uh, what sort of system this is showing, but um, it was more as an example than anything. Um, and the next way to sort of show molecular dynamics that's particularly you know interesting to me, at least, is um, molecular movies. Um, these show molecular velocities. Um, by using uh, data formed by calculation. Um, and often this is just exported as a .xyz, and you can put it into you know, VMD or Avogadro or VASP or, uh, or not VASPA or uh, you know, VESTA or any sort of program you'd like, and you can actually show a sort of movie and how it progresses. Um, and this can often be for basically whatever sort of you know, system you want, depending on the inputs you put in, of course. All right, next. Now that we've had sort of a brief overview of, uh, uh, you know, uh, kinetics of uh, molecules, at least regarding to uh, simulations, um, we'll now start to look at molecular movies and those simulations and how to convert um, files that you may get to proper files for upload or um, where to upload them and how to visualize them. OK, next. So here are uh, two programs that I particularly use. Uh, VMD, which is drag and drop format, um, allows for um, a lot of an analytic tools um, 
these analytical tools are much more robust than things like uh, Vesta or Avogadro, as you can often, you know, sort of simulate a lot of environments, or you can analyze certain settings or uh, parameters of uh, the simulation that you're typically not able to do with base packages of Avogadro, Vesta, etc. Um, and as such, uh, VMD is very, very uh, robust for uh, movies and as well as making these molecular movies and analyzing them. So it can be very, very useful for that, though it often sometimes lacks visual quality, um, whereas you know things like Avogadro appear more user-friendly and have a bit of a better visual interface. Um, but also Avogadro, to that extent, does not have um, a very robust analytic tool set. Um, as such, you have to add extra extensions um, to actually properly get these analytical tools rather than just getting them right out of the box like with VMD. All right, next. So there's two ways you can actually convert a movie. So for one, you have uh, your movie.xyz file that you can SCP directly to your computer or directly to another server than to your computer, depending on how um, you have things set up. Um, but in this case, um, we start a movie off as an X, a .xyz file. Um, unfortunately, those are unable to be uploaded um, as a video into any sort of video editing software or any sort of uh, video sharing website, such as YouTube. So in order to convert there, uh, you can do one of two things. So you can screen capture. Uh, I have a program on my computer called OBS Studio that can uh, screen capture and uh, allow me to show the movies in like things like Avogadro or um, VMD without um, you know, sort of compromising the UI and like any sort of analytical um, you know, tool sets that I may want to show in my video. However, a much more quick and easy way to do it is to just do a .xyz to .mod conversion used by your specific cluster. In this case, um, I use the command used by Quarry um, in order to um, convert um, a .xyz movie into a .mov movie. And as such, then it can be uploaded um, you know, to uh, whatever sort of uh, platform you'd like. OK, next. And just a sort of a quick uh, overview of how to, uh, you know, sign up for YouTube and uh, sort of upload these videos. All you need to do is simply create an account, which uh, all you do is just click create account on the sign in page, um, and uh, you'll follow the prompts, and your account will be created. Um, once that's done, all you have to do is go to the top right corner, click upload video. There may be a bit of a good, a bit of a, a couple of steps in between that, depending on. Uh, what sort of uh, um, account that you're using. But um, once uh, that's all done, then you're able to upload the video just by simply drag and drop or um, another form. It will take a while to process. Um, I've had several videos that have taken upwards of you know, hours to days. Um, and as such, uh, some patience needs to be exercised. But it's fairly easy in that um, all you need to do is just drag and drop the file that you wish to use and uh, simply uh, continue on. OK, I believe that's it. Oh, uh, yes, uh, the extra part. So this is just sort of a uh, example of a molecular uh, dynamic model or movie. Um, and it shows um, essentially an optimization of um, a molecule in a certain temperature, um, or either that or it's going through thermal equilibrization. Um, but essentially, this is just sort of an example of what kind of movies you can put up. And um, this one is particularly from uh, VMD. So I hope okay. that uh, provides most. Yeah. Uh, please uh, join me uh, thanking uh, Janice. And the presentation is open for discussion, uh, both in uh, uh, typed and verbal verbal questions. So um, there was a uh, 
the question is from Professor Huang. How do you choose the number of ionic steps, NSW, for the system you are simulating? How many steps would be sufficient? Of course, of course. And uh, this definitely depends on what sort of a system that you're simulating, um, whether that be a very complex system or a very, very simple system, such as, you know, um, you know, something simple like uh, what we are showing right now up on the screen. Um, essentially, um, I believe that it's a little bit more, um, instead of being something that's very concrete, it's very uh, sort of fluid in how, um, how many steps you can use or how many steps you should use at least. Um, in my belief, if you want a more accurate um, view of things, you'd want more steps. If you want something that's a little bit um, less accurate, you'd use less steps. Or at least that's uh, sort of my view of things, so. OK, OK, let me uh, contribute. Oh, OK, yeah, Professor Frank is, 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 is happy with the answer. Um, yeah, if system is in equilibrium, it's not long. If it is a reaction, then one needs to wait until it is done. Li Hu Sha is uh, asking one question for James. How to decide the value of S mass, or what is the difference between the S mass equals minus one and S mass equals zero? So basically, uh, Lihu is uh, asking, what's the difference between uh, heating thermalization and molecular dynamics? Can you explain? Um, heating thermalization and molecular dynamics. OK, yeah. Uh, so heating thermalization, um, essentially, um, from my knowledge at least, where it differs from molecular dynamics, um, is in the fact that often um, this thermalization is, how do I say this? It's very limited in its use, and it's not often used for, how do I say this? OK, OK. Um, I would like to contribute to keep yeah. uh, asking the same question as the who was asking. Uh, so we, we still uh, need to. Uh, bring it to, to, to make it absolutely clear. And I'm going yes. to focus on the slide number five and ask about the lower right box. So you have a segment of the postcard that you have highlighted with uh, blue box. Yes. Can you please explain w w what it is? So these are. I believe, at least, uh, the velocities of the individual um, atoms at each time step, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But um, from what I know, at least, that is the sort of velocities that we'd be looking at, or at least like part of the trajectory, at least the velo velocity part of the trajectory that we'd be looking at. So what would happen if you start uh, S mass equals zero without thermalization without thermalization what we, what we, without uh, heating if you immediately take relaxed geometry and start molecular dynamics uh, what yes. would be the contents of this blue box and what would be the image uh, or movie of the of the molecular dynamics to your expectation i would expect that it would be an optimization but if it is optimized, if it is already optimal oh. geometry. Then I'd imagine that it would be a blank box. It would be all uh, zeros, essentially. Yes. Yes. And what will be the, how would movie appear? A uh, movie would appear uh, completely uh, still. Absolutely uh, no movement. Super, super. Uh, to my understanding, it is a perfect answer to question of Li Hu. Uh, Li Hu, are you happy with this answer? With this, uh, uh, answer of uh, Jay, so you want more details. Okay, Li Hu is, uh, his answer is telling thank you. So he's thank you for the question. Yes. And uh, Mary Mel has uh, a question. Of, yeah. Uh, yes, please. 
Actually, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Perfect. Sorry, my internet is really horrible here in Canada. Uh, don't so. worry. Mine is too. <laughs> um, and your molecular dynamics, could you go a slide before? Um, keep going. There's one where you have a bunch of wiggly lines on a graph. I had a question on that one. Oh, is it uh, the uh, temperature graph? Temperature versus time graph? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a little bit later in the slides, yeah? Yeah, wherever, wherever you have that. Yes. Oh, sure. I think it is here. Yes, there we go. Okay, are. so this is a very interesting graph to me. Um, so first, can you explain what it is we're looking at and what kind of behavior you expect to see after a certain amount of time versus the temperature? I would expect, um, at least normally anyways, um, that this sort of temperature would equilibrate down to um, due to the potential um, sort of eating up that kinetic energy, though from what I'm seeing on the graph, at least, although this is not a system that I particularly know off the bat, um, it seems to be shifting quite a bit. Um, as to the reason why, um, I'm not 100% sure, if I'm being honest. Well, it's OK, because you're, you're starting, you know, you're just starting this out. What would be a way to kind of go forth in the file system you know, it looks like for me, you have femtoseconds up to about 550. Mm -hmm. you, what would you do to, you know, based on the character of the graph? Based on the character you... graph, uh, I would suggest um, doing a longer um, time step. So doing longer time steps um, all the way up to, uh, you know, probably, you know, at least probably a couple thousand femtoseconds, at least. I would agree with that, because it looks like about 500, you start to spike up quite a bit. So, yes. and then what would it look like? You said it would equilibrate, so then it would just kind of look like, look like what, if it was- It, would, uh, it would sort of look like a uh, gradual decay, essentially. Um, or at least um, it would not look uh, this, quite this chaotic, um, for sure. <laughs> so the spikes up and down would be like smaller. Yes, okay, correct. So, yeah, because you wouldn't be varying so much. Okay. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, more questions. Oh, um, there is a there is a typed question from uh, Joanta to uh, Janice. Joanta, would you like to ask your question? Please either type or speak to the microphone. Right now, it looks like you are muted question small basic question that uh, what is the best uh, visualizing tool for molecular dynamics like what is the best molecular visualizing tool like uh, if you consider Avogadro and visualizing molecular dynamics BMD which is the best visualizing tool uh, for molecular dynamics um, I would say um, personally at least from the ones that I've used I believe um, VMD is very robust. Um, although it lacks a lot in uh, sort of uh, more visual cases and can often sort of chug sometimes, uh, I believe that the analysis tool set that it provides is very useful. It's a very useful tool set. <laughs> and okay. so okay. Um, I believe that since it's so robust, um, that can often make up for um, some of the visual issues um, that are noted um, occasionally in VMD as opposed to some of the more uh, visually oriented softwares. Yeah, 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 you are right, yeah, thanks, thanks, great, great, yeah. Okay, great, okay. thanks, yeah, yeah, yeah. great, Thank yeah. You. Great, okay. yeah. Okay, more, uh, last chance for questions to Janice. More questions, one, more questions, two, more questions, three. Okay, let's thank uh, Janice once again. And for uh, um, congratulations to uh, all participants of the class all visitors and participants to the questions for support uh, and for uh, enthusiastic and intellectually intense uh, semester. So it's, uh, there is a hope that uh, skills accumulated during this semester will be 
very helpful towards uh, uh, practical research components. And uh, the presenters will hear from me about uh, the uh, grades for these presentations and, and, and for the semester very soon. But uh, being brave and presenting this important amount of information and, and answering uh, questions is is credited substantially. So uh, many thanks to everyone and uh, thank you all to all participants. Thank you, thank you Dr. Singh. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Uh, so from now on, the uh, presentations are done and semester is done. So uh, everyone is uh, welcome to disconnect. And uh, I will check if uh, recordings went good. If uh, they were uh, accessible, they will be shared with all participants. So this is the last class for us? Yeah, um, yes, <laughs> we need to stay in the schedule of the semester and uh, summer semester is over. Okay. If uh, you are interested to continue this activity, let me know. We can find some format. But so I uh, can still use the photons, right? Anytime. If, I... if you need to access uh, the facilities, uh, uh, send an email to me, and it, it would be very possible. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. I'll stay uh, connected for a few minutes if there are some follow-up questions, but we are done for the semester. There are no any uh, more required uh, steps, and uh, everyone is welcome to, to disconnect if uh, willing to do so. Awesome. Well, awesome. Congratulations, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time, and I'll probably be uh... I'll be in Halifax when I connect with you. <laughs> so. Oh, thank you. Many, many, many thanks. It's it's really great. Thank you for continuous support and visiting uh, sequence of this of these events. The oh, absolutely. Uh, unbiased questions are the critically important part of uh, <laughs> of this course. Yeah. No. And and absolutely. And it's really relevant to what I'm doing. What I'll be doing experimentally. So this is going to be really useful to still continue and grow from where I was. So it will be really quite useful. And mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, everyone stay safe and I'll see you next time. Yeah. See you. See you. Okay, uh, thank you, Tao. Thank you, Lihu. Thank you, uh, Stephen. It was uh, really great. Yeah, yeah, a couple of people are connected, but uh, we are going to disconnect now. So, if there are no special questions to me, I'm going to disconnect. Oh, thank you, Lihu. I, I look forward for uh, fruitful collaboration with. Uh, your advisor, Professor Tao Yu, and... Sure. Mm -hmm. Tao, I'm going to disconnect. If you need to talk, let me know.
your call will be disconnected 